If you already want to start thinking about ways you can use your laser to make gifts for the holidays, watch this video. I'm going to show you how to use the Xtool F1 etch on glass, cut and engrave on craft paper, and engrave on a wooden spoon. Xtool did send me an F1 machine uh, in exchange for creating this tutorial for you guys, so thanks to them for that. This is what the Xtool Creative Space looks like, their uh, design program. And so this is just kind of an example of the tag that I'm going to show you how to recreate. So if you go to the shapes, just to find this rounded square and then also add in a little circle. And if you hold shift while you drag out the size of the circle, then it will stay an even circle instead of turning into an oval. All right, so the shape that I'm going to make this uh, into a rectangle change it to 2.5 inches tall and 1.9 inches wide and it keeps those rounded corners and then you can uh, put the little circle in the top we're going to make this into a tag so we can tie it on with a string if you click both of them and hit subtract then now those paths are like joined together so um, when we set the settings for that later to cut we can do it all at once instead of having to do the line and the circle separately now we're going to add some words to our tag. So click on the text icon. Then over here you can type in Merry Christmas or whatever you want to add onto your tag. I'm going to use the Britney signature font. I don't like the space between the two lines and so I can adjust that here um, in the letting box. And so I just change it to minus one and it looks a little better. So I'm going to just kind of fill up this space in the top of the tag. And then we're gonna also add um, our little family signature here at the bottom. And I'm going to adjust that line spacing again. This time I'm gonna go all the way to minus three and I'm going to change this font to quicksand. I like it because it's a nice simple font. It's easy to read and it's easy to read when it's small. And it's a good contrast from our very fancy looking Merry Christmas. Okay, and then the last thing I want to do is add a little bit of decoration to this other corner. Uh, and there's a couple of ways to do this. If you come to the Shapes tab and uh, click on the little expand arrow for plant, there's lots of really cute little flowers and greenery and plants. And so I'm going to uh, pick this one to add in. So if there's something here that you like, go ahead and use it. I'm going to click on it and it will add onto uh, our workspace here. So I'll just change that down to a size where it's going to fit well in that space. And you'll notice I'm going to leave the stem overhanging the cut line just a teeny bit. Another thing you can do is import an image. If you have an image of something that you want to use to decorate your little tag, then that's fine too. Here are a bunch of little branch designs that I downloaded from Creative Fabrica. You can just resize that and then again you can just drag that onto your tag where you want it to go. All right so now I need to set all of my settings. I have laser flat and user defined material and then for all of the text and decoration um, on the tag I'm using engrave and so I want those engrave settings to be blue light, power 80 percent, speed 225 millimeters per second, one pass and 100 lines per centimeter. For the cut line, it's going to be again manual setting, blue light, power is 40%, and the speed is 15. So now that I have all those settings correct for each object here, I can copy and paste it, and each pasted tag will have the correct settings as well. And then I saw that by making these just a teeny bit smaller, I could fit three in the workspace here. So that's what I did. To prep the machine for cutting, we're gonna put in uh, this cutting panel and then lay the craft paper over the top of that and gently drop down the shield. Once 
with my computer already connected by Wi-Fi to my machine, I can hit process and then up here in the top right, click start. And then you push the button on the actual F1 machine to start the laser process. Here you can see the laser working on the engraving first. This is real time. So it's really a quick process here. It'll do the engraving on all three tags, and then it will go back and do the cutting. It'll cut out the little circle first, and then cut out the outline of the tag. When the laser has stopped cutting, then you can um, lift up the shield, take the tags out. I had to pop mine a little bit, um, but they were completely got through. And here we go, our cute little laser tags. The next thing I'm going to do is work on the engraving for the spoon handle. Uh, this is something that I designed already in Illustrator. Um, and I'll give you the free file. You want to use this same design on a spoon. So it just says stirring equals homemade, and I'm going to change it to engrave. And then I just need to bring in a rectangle. I already measured uh, the dimensions of the spoon handle that I want the design to stay in. And so I'm just creating a little rectangle that's uh, 0.6 inches tall and 4 inches wide. And then I'll just make sure that the whole design stays inside that area, and I'll know it'll fit on my handle. Uh, select the whole design, click combine, and then unite. And now it's just all uh, one path there. So under engrave, I'm going to change the power to 100 and the speed to 300. And then the lines per centimeter, I'm setting at 80. And then I definitely want to do the framing step. I'll position the handle of the spoon here and then use the knob to raise up the laser just a little bit so the two dots line up and then once that is correct then I'll check the framing. You can see here's the rectangle that shows where the design is going to be. So I can adjust the position of the handle just a little bit and then when I hit process it looks like it's not going to completely fill in the design as much as I want it to. Um, so I'm changing this back to 100 lines per centimeter. Okay, so now everything's set up. I can click start here and then push the start button on the machine. And then this is what the laser looks like as it's engraving on the spoon. And even through that green shield there, you can see this is showing up on the handle. Since my guard is not all the way down, I was wearing green glasses to make sure my eyes were protected uh, during this engraving process. All right, and then our final laser project, etch the outside of our glass jar. Since the laser light is going to pass right through the clear glass, we have to create a dark surface for the etching to work. I picked up this matte chalk paint just at Walmart. I meant to pick up the black color, but instead ended up picking a dark gray. So I, at this point I was just kind of crossing my fingers that it would work, but I liked that it was matte because it wouldn't have a shine or be reflective and try to bounce the laser off of it. And this is gonna wash off really easily. So I took a foam brush and I tried to do three or four light even coats just along this flat side of the jar. And if you can see here, it actually has a little bit of a raised border, almost like a frame. So I just kind of tried to paint all inside there. That's where my design is going to go. And then I'm going to speed this up here for you to watch. You can see I grab the heat gun and I use that to help dry it between coats. Uh, you can see some of the gloss or shine kind of start to disappear uh, from the paint as it dries. So I found this uh, SVG design, again, on Creative Fabrica, Baking Spirits Bright. I thought it was really cute. I like the design of it. It'll go great for both the 
uh, cookie mix that we're going to put inside of it and then it can be used as a cookie jar afterwards. So I measured out the area that I can use on my glass jar and so I'm making a rectangle uh, as a reference. Take all of this design, unite it so that I can work with it all as one combined piece. Okay, that looks like a good size. It's going to fit inside of the space that I have to work with just fine. So I'll delete that extra rectangle now. And now I can set the engraved settings for um, doing this glass jar. This will be using the blue light at 100 power. Speed is 80. And we're going to bump this up to 180 lines per centimeter. Then I set the jar under the laser and I raised up the laser as high as it would go and I still couldn't get the laser points to focus together. So I actually rigged it up a little bit so that the X tool is just laying on its side and I took the base square out of the bottom. So now the laser is going all the way through and I just laid the jar on its side also. So then back here in the program you can press start and then push the start button on the actual machine. The laser is open at this point, so you definitely want to wear um, laser eye protection. You can see here the laser has burned off the paint and the surface of the glass there is cloudy, so we know that the etching worked. So I'm going to take it to the sink and wash all of that paint off. There you go, our laser engraved or etched glass. I'm gonna fill it up with a cookie mix and then I'll put all of our pieces together. So I just took a rubber band and twisted it once around the handle and then put the rest around the lid of the jar. Then just tie on a couple of pretty ribbons to cover up that rubber band and finally add the little gift tag. Hope you got some great new ideas for how you can use your Xtool F1 laser. If you have any questions about stuff I did here, please let me know in the comments. Details for everything I used here are down in the description, and I'd love it if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time. Bye!